Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2024 Derby City Classic. This is round one action here. Got Lee Van Cortiza versus Rob Saez. Wow, what a lag it was. Uh, Rob pulling that one down. This is going to be a fun match. Uh, a couple of really quality players here at Derby City Classic. Rob out of Louisiana, I believe. He's a 741. Lee is coming in at an 814. Like they say, there's there's no Fargo for one pocket, but these are both real quality players. Um, Lee, definitely more of a rotation player, but incredible player. Rob also a very proficient player. Uh, a lot of Louisiana tradition in one pocket, so this will be a fun one. Like I said, we're playing round one action. This is one pocket, race to three. Rob's got to make eight balls in his pocket before Lee makes eight in his pocket. It'll be one of those two feet pockets. Whatever direction Rob breaks towards, that will be his hole. <coughs> Break is a huge part of the game here in one pocket. Trying to push that 12 ball towards his hole. Trying to move the couple other towards his side and use that stack as a blocking blocker for him. That's pretty dang good break. Um, it leaked out a little bit high, and he's a little bit off that right side rail, so that's going to allow Lee a little more room to work here. And it looks like he's got a bank lane for that 12. Um, not sure he'll shoot it, but that's definitely a viable shot. Yeah, if you can play that 12 ball with high inside and get on the other side of the 10 without bumping it, you're looking pretty good, but it's asking a lot of that shot. It's also taking a pretty big risk for your opening shot. But Lee's a shooter. Let's see what he's got in mind. I wasn't able to make Derby City this year, so this is a whole lot of fun for me. Exciting to get to watch these players play. This is my favorite tournament in the world. If you haven't gotten a chance to make it, Southern Indiana, January. It's as good as they get. Largest one-pocket tournament in the world. So it does play it. Uh, plays with that high inside. Avoids the 10 ball. Gets a little low to take that 2. Um, he's probably going to end up banking that 10 ball. Oh, maybe not. That's a, that's a really viable cut here on the 2. Not sure if he'll try and try and hold for the one ball there. Yeah, it's a pretty sharp angle. I kind of like the ten ball. You can hit that with a little more control than the two. Yep, that's what he's looking at here. that ball well. Slides in for him. I think he might have been trying to hold for the one ball next. Doesn't look like anything else goes for him. He's got a three railer on the one if he wants to take it. Looks like he can probably draw down behind that stack and fire this one ball if he wants to. He can also choose to just push something in front of his hole. Um, I kind of like playing the four ball here and putting it behind the stack. Boy, if you got the control to to three rail this one though, that's a that's a great shot. I think that's what he's shooting. We're trying to draw right into that 14 ball here. Maybe not, but does a good job not slipping too low and opening up that ball. Pushes the one right in front of his pocket. Lee's off to an early lead. Rob's pretty much stuck kicking here unless he wants to just stick him in the stack. I wouldn't mind playing the 14-3, pushing the 3 off that right side rail over to my side and freezing him on the 11.
might try to play off that four and down to the foot rail, but <clears throat> yeah, Lee's pretty open to bank that one two also. It's good to take your time on shots like this. Uh, yeah, it's easy to, I mean, be sitting there staring at it and just want to fire at something, but got to be really mindful. These games can slip away pretty quick. Might be trying to get all the way. Okay. She's trying to get all the way out there. Kick that one out. Knocks the two back in the pack. Really effective shot. He does open up a bank on the one. Uh, but moves both those out of there pretty well. That was nice control. Alright, so trying to use the pack to push balls over there and stick right behind there, but I don't think he's going to like that one bit. I think Rob might have a bank here on the 13, but uh, it's tough to see how wired on that nine he is. Can't really afford to bank the seven ball here. Yeah, taking a good look and that that's a tough one to push the cue ball forward a whole bunch on also just you gotta get past that seven and not sell it. He's got the angle though, he's gotta shoot that. Looks like you might be a little jammed up. Just probably playing straight through that seven, float down to the rail. All right, back into the stack. Also a nice shot. Productive, getting stuff on his side. Leaving Lee not much to work with. Shoot, we're six shots in, and I'm excited about this match. This will be a good one. Just kind of push off that 13, probably go right back into the back of the stack here. Okay, all the way down to the foot rail. Maybe kind of tempting him with that one ball. I don't think Rob's going to fall for that, though. Got a potential two-railer on the two-ball. That's probably a little reckless. You'll probably play the... I kind of like the two into the six and kind of try to get right between that 13-8 ball. He obviously likes to hold the cue ball right in that pack, which is very effective. Alright, so Karam's off there, plays the two-railer. Doesn't leak the 15. It's a terrific return. Yeah, great shot there. I think Lee's probably going to end up jacking up here and playing off the 15. He'd like to do something with that 9, the gap's right there, but... Uh, that's a tricky shot. I think he might be looking at the carom off the 13 to bank. That can cost you a lot, though, if you do that wrong. Yeah, boy, that I don't think there's a window to get through there. <clears throat> yeah, I think this is a smart shot. So I was looking at getting closer to that foot rail, but he's wanting to protect that 615. That completely makes sense. No real viable banks there for Rob on his side. Looks like Rob is probably going to kick to the back side of the 6. Alright, 
Alright, just playing off the 13 and back in the pack. Yep, still nothing doing in this stack there for Lee. Pretty tricky window on that three railer on the 15. I, something's in the way there. I think it's probably the seven ball. Yeah, so kiss off this eight. Kind of same shot he shot last time. Doesn't really want to get high enough up that he can bank that 13 ball to return. So he's going all the way up using the two ball. Great control. Yeah, Rubs got a bunch on his side, but he's pretty jammed up when it comes to that long rail bank. Looks like he's got enough of the seven to go, but he can't get on the top side of that 615. A lot of players like to kind of force their opponent to move the ball that <clears throat> they'd like to see him move. So getting close to that two ball, hoping he's going to do something with that. Looks like he's playing that seven. Trying to get over behind the one, potentially. He's just leaving him long. I think a lot of players are going to try and play something close enough to their hole that you force your opponent to deal with it. But man, pure shooter like Lee can't leave him openings like this. He's got a pretty easy shot on the 15 to get over behind that stack. <clears throat> Doesn't look like he's going to take it though. Unfortunately, Rob lined those balls up too. That 7-3-2 is going to make things tricky for him. It's a great wall for Lee to work with too. Yeah, Lee might be considering that bank on the one because it's pretty free with the way things are lined up. I I don't know how he's going resist to resist that 15, though. Hits it beautifully. Ooh. Just about in the hole. So leaves a bunch of distance, puts a ball in front of his hole. Nothing going dead in for Rob there. I think he's probably going to kick under that one ball taking us time to look. I mean, if that 5-9 passes the 8, that's an easy ball to kind of glance off and get yourself, hopefully get yourself behind the 1. <clears throat> Can't hit that ball too full, though, and move the 5 towards his pocket. Yeah, he might just be able to thin that 5 and go straight into the 1. Kind of two things at the same time. Easy to sell a bank from there. Yeah, he's dealing with the one. Just going straight into it, banking it out of there. That's how you make that shot. Spotting it up. Yeah, boy, that... 7-3-2 really makes things a lot easier for Lee to work over here. He can take this 15 pretty easily and not have to worry too much about it. Push that cue ball up table. Play the 6 also if he wants. I would be surprised to see him move those balls.
The six ball's a shot too, but I just, the 15 feels a little more natural to me. I think he's kind of looking at the 11 to see if that two rails through. He might have a line on that. And he can just put him in a nasty spot here, just bury him right on that eight. Or on the 14. Yep, so just protecting that advantage. Well, Rob's got a jacked up Z bank on the two if he wants to force something. I don't think he's going to like it. Taking a good long look at the four ball. The four ball does bank straight, but oh, it's a, that's a tough window to get through. You kind of got to try and come back between the 14 15 if you play that. Tell you, you play bank pool for a few days before you start playing one pocket and every bank looks like a hanger. It's interesting watching these pros take risks that you you probably wouldn't normally see them take, but they've been playing banks and everything starts looking pretty juicy. He's going. Looks like he's just pushing up table too. Well, he drilled that shot. Unfortunately, it was the wrong pocket. Gets him all the way down on the rail. So good cue ball control, but leaves a pretty, pretty juicy shot here for Lee. Yeah, kind of trying to figure out what comes next on this one. Back cut on the 15 doesn't quite look like it goes. And you're probably going right into the 14 if you shoot it. Kind of got to jack up and fire this 11. To get another shot out of it. Hits it beautifully. Has more of an angle than probably would have liked there. It's got the combo on the 15-6 that doesn't really cost a whole lot to shoot, but yeah, that, that's danger zone for, for if you miss. I think you might see him play just into the... He's going to move those balls. I'm, I'm really surprised. You can see he's disappointed in that shot. Yeah, let it get away from him. Moving stuff to his side, but he broke up that wall and didn't marry him behind that two ball like he was hoping. I think Rob's line is cut off by the seven ball to bank this four. But I do think that's what he'll play. It's a tricky one too. What you'd like to do is bank that and get up behind the 13, but hit that ball wrong and get yourself in trouble. <laughs> Think about playing the seven ball into the four also. I, I kind of think that's too much of a risk for what you can accomplish. I think this is the shot. You just got to make sure you hit it well. So he gets, almost gets up behind that 13, and yeah, that's what can go wrong there. You sell a real juicy bank to, to Lee. I don't think Lee can stiff this one. I think he's going to have to pass it. But if he can pass this ball and get up behind that 4-3-2, he's going to be in good shape. He's lining up low. He's stiffing it. Hits it beautifully. Shows what I know. He's probably going to play that six ball next.
It's got a pretty steep angle to hold for the 13. Looks like he might just roll forward. Nice shot. Not making it, but leaves four away from game number one. Rob can bank to 15, but I don't think it's worth the risk. I would really like to do something to move my 3-2-4 uh, right now. I think I'm going to play off the right side of that 3 ball and try and get on the back side of the 6. Just got to do something to open up those balls in front of your hole. Just got to make sure you get there. Yeah, that kind of stuff starts happening and these games slip away real quick. Well, I'm not sure what he's taking next, but I know it's coming right here. Definitely got to fire this bank if you want to move up high enough to, <clears throat> to shoot the 13 or 6 next. Beautiful. Excellent execution. He needs three. They're all sitting right there. It's like 13, 6, 15. Beautiful line. And that's going to be all she wrote. Lee Van Cortiza taking down game number one. Here, round one of the 2024 Derby City Classic. <coughs> We're here with Railbirds Productions, brought to you in part by Bad Boys. Thanks for everything they do for this tournament, this event, this stream. And this, my name is Summerfield Habiter. Having a blast here working with Railbirds. And game number one in the books. Lee's first chance at a break here. Boy, it leaks that 10 ball. Again, that's something I talk about quite a bit as I, I was told by one of the really good players of this game that oftentimes that's a racking error as opposed to a breaking error, but he definitely saw him catch a little too much of that second ball. Um, you're gonna leak a lot more of that wing ball onto your opponent's side. <clears throat> I'm not sure if Rob can get enough English on this. He's gotta cut that ball so thin. I'm not sure if he can get around the 11. I think that's what he's going to try to do. This is one where you, you really don't want to float too high up the table. You'd rather leave yourself a back cut on the 11 than you would get behind those balls. And yeah, you're probably going to throw this with some outside, so you really got to play this ball pretty soft. He's in a tough queuing position, too. Yep, smart to go for that extension. One extension comes off, the other comes on. Extensions have really changed the game in my mind. Normally you'd see a lot more crutch shots than you do these days. I sure like seeing players be able to go for that extension. Probably because I'm not great at shooting with the crutch.
Yeah, my, my thinking here is I really want to get to the right side of that 11 and make sure I don't float high enough up to have that 14-1 uh, block me. Kind of looking at that line off the object ball into the 1, but <clears throat> if you make contact with the 1, the 14 is probably going to end up in your way. So anything you can do to stay low on that ball... like Rob maybe not able to find that longer extension and we're back yep that's still a tough spot So much for holding. That's got a little too much of that ball. That ball just takes off, too, I tell you what. Not sure he really even wanted to make that ball in that position. I think you're probably going to see him play off the 12 here, float down behind the 2. Yeah, I really don't see a whole lot of offensive opportunity here. You're sure disappointed you can't get more out of that, but... Yeah, last thing you want to do is force it. playing off that 12 is your best option you can accomplish something get it over on your side and you can still work down get behind the two he's kicked the ball really well so far so could be thinking about kicking two rails under the two ball he's still looking at his hole Wow. Wow. All right, so please. I believe that was Karam 9 off the 1 there. I'm going to have to see that one again here in a minute. But looks, I mean, put himself in a great position. That was a tough shot. 14, probably trying to hold for the 11 next if he can. If not, he's probably going to try and work into that pack. Excellent control. Yeah, let's see this. All right, nine off the 14, narrowly avoiding the scratch. Wow. Beautiful shot. Plays the two-way also. Beautiful. Man, to have the control to get to that foot side of the table. Foot, yeah. Foot rail instead of scratch, and that's pretty remarkable. 11, trying to get on the one. Keeps himself low enough. Perfect shot there. Enough room to break these out. Uh, this is kind of tough because you'd like to make contact with the 15, but it's hard to not push yourself too far forward if you do. Yep, so probably going right into the three ball and just hoping you can move that 15 a little. Uh, that's, that's what I was afraid of. Still got yourself a good bank on the 13 ball though. He needs three. Excellent game here for Rob Saez. Yeah, you gotta, you really gotta decide whether you're gonna make this bank or not. Doesn't quite commit. Um, hangs it in the jaws, but I think Lee might be able to get that ball out. Not sure if he's going to. It's down five nothing. Yeah, I mean you don't really want to give him a ball, but the last thing you want to do is give him a chance to get on the last couple he needs. I 
With those balls scattered around, I think he might just end up giving him this 13. Pretty tough to control kicking that ball out and, and staying around the pocket. Yeah. Nice shot. Gets him all the way in the jaws. All right, two to go. Six nothing lead. Rob would love to get him in that crook of the 2 7. Looks like he's lining up low. He might be shooting for that. He gets him down there. That's real trouble for Lee. Oh, man, barely missing that window. Still good controlled shot. Doesn't sell anything. I'm kind of surprised Lee is not looking at the two off the seven ball here. Looks like it might be going into the rail. If he's not looking at it, there's a good reason. Could be looking at a kick there also. I think kicking into that seven ball nice and soft, a lot of good things can happen from there. Two rail in the 15, wow. It's an aggressive shot and that's gonna cost him. Yeah, I think Rob's gotta take this bank. Looks like he's got a good window there to play up and just make contact with the 6 so he can stay far enough right and not sell the 2-7. Beautiful. Alright, so just went around that 6-8. Uh, Got to cut on the three to win this game. I'm shooting this ball, and I'm always thinking in the back of my mind how to get into a spot that I'm not selling anything, but at this point you really got to just commit to make that ball. Get the rest of it out of your mind. Yeah, and that's what he does. Just commit, get there. Beautiful shot. Game number two going to Rob Saez. We're 1 1. Rob to break. This stream here brought to you by Hustlin' Clothing Company, JB Custom Q Cases, Jerry Olivier Custom Qs, Lightman Lipman Lights, the best in the biz and locked and loaded custom billiard apparel. Like I said, this is Summerfield Habner here with Railbirds Productions, and we are brought to you in part by the Bad Boys. Thanks for being here with us at the 2024 Derby City Classic. Like I said, round one action. That means neither one of these players has a loss. Not a conventional bracket style tournament here. They, they redraw every single time, so completion of round one they do a redraw if you have one loss you got a chance to rebuy before they redraw that next round pretty great break there uh, moves a couple balls in threatening position and opens up the stack so there's no real clear path through there that's a great break I think you're probably gonna see Lee kick in here he can do something with a two ball and kind of try and work him in between that 715 if you'd like. Yeah, boy. One of the reasons I love watching this game is seeing what players do with this shot right here. Um, it dictates what's going to happen for the rest of the game, and there's just no clear path. Everybody sees it so different. 
does look like he's going to play for that window. Alright, so he's trying to move balls. He was trying to use that to bank that one back over. Pretty productive. Gets all the way down to the, or close to the foot rail anyway. Yeah. And at this point, you're one shot in and there's only one threatening ball, so that's a pretty effective answer to a good break. I think you're just going to see Rob protect his, his threatening ball here. Play off the 10 or the 7. Get up by that uh, right side pocket. Yeah, so hitting a little more of the ball, trying to get all the way back into that pack. Doesn't quite get there, but still protects the 14. Yeah, it doesn't quite look like that 7 has a line to get through. It's got a straight bank back on the 2, but it doesn't really get you much and take a whole lot of risk shooting that one. I like playing off the 7 and just getting under the 14 here. Looks like he's going to play off the 11 and try and do the same. Gets there. Very nice shot. This is a tough one. Uh, because he's on that rail, it's tough to catch enough English to spin that cue ball off the seven and into the back of the pack. Uh, if you think about kicking from here, I mean, you don't really want to move your 14. You definitely want to protect it. I, I think about taking a foul here. I think he's looking at a firmer kick to try and move some more towards his pocket, but I feel like I take a big risk there selling a bank. I know I'm at an advantage right now in this game. Yeah, it doesn't... I mean, boy, that 12-4 is interesting. It's a, it's a pretty risky uh, kick to take, but... Let's see what he's doing. <coughs> Taking a swing at it. And pretty effective shot. Hangs on that 15 ball. I like just knocking that seven over to my side of the table. Uh, play a three rails up table. Hanging my cue ball there. Can think about playing it into the 14, but it's easy to get it stuck on this side of the table and sell something. Yeah. <clears throat> I like that Lee keeps really trying to pin him on a ball. That's just so effective. You really don't think about it until you're shooting over a ball, and I'm always uncomfortable shooting in close proximity like that. Very effective thing to do. Yep, taking, taking good looks at everything. Again, a, a lot of the shots that I see, I see as defensive ones to kind of force my opponent to make a mistake, but when you're playing a player of this caliber, it's pretty hard to hope that somebody's going to make a mistake like that. It's just going to take him up table. Looks like maybe trying to pocket that two ball. Just two rail it and leave him up on the head rail. Nice long line of balls to protect the 14 and putting a little distance between Lee and his work.
That's a good shot. I like it. Unfortunately, just like Lee is doubled up, um, Rob's or Rob has doubled up Lee's ability to get to that 14. Lee can kind of use the same thing against him. All those balls kind of right in the way of Rob doing anything offensive if he does choose to leave him up table. Yeah, that's this is not an easy shot. He can play off the uh, the right side of that six ball and just kind of float down table. It looks like he could play into the two and follow it also. Just looking at the 13, it looks like. The three, wow. I mean, pretty great control, but I think he might have sold a cut here. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a tough shot to take. Rob might have enough of an angle here to bank the two ball back and float up table. Might try to slide between the 9-7 also. Yeah, kind of forced to shoot at this ball. Ooh. Did he get behind the one though? What an incredible shot by Rob Saez. Yeah, I mean, he missed that bank bad, but hit his cue ball perfectly. Doesn't even really matter what you do with your object ball at that point. Beautiful shot. Yeah, Lee's in a spot here. Fortunately for him, like I said, things are still doubled up. He's got a lot of the table to work with. What a beautiful shot, man. Yeah, the control to push that far forward and get right on that ball is exceptional. It's like he's just kicking. Whew. I, if I'm kicking at this ball, I have a hard time not just taking a foul. Um, guess Rob can give it right back to you, but. Kicking all the way underneath. All right. So Lee's going to 0-1. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I think that's more effective than just leaving him back behind that one. I guess if he does, like I said, he's he's still in the same trap. So at least he got himself out of that. Oh. Rob's gonna give it back. So, I believe the rule is going to come into play where no two players can be... Oh, they both got a coin up. Uh, I think it was last year, I guess, that they were playing no two players can be in the negative. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty sure the rule still is, is the same for Derby City. Uh, but as I've said many times, there's not a whole lot of referees here, not a whole lot of players attend the player meeting, and... Whatever they decide works for them in this match oftentimes ends up being the rule, so. Nice shot there for Lee. Negative one, negative one.
think he's probably going to try and get him back in the pack here again. He might try to do something with the six ball. Uh, it does look like the six banks back. He's got quite a bit of open table on the right there if he can hold the ball. Easiest shot to me seems like playing that far right stripe into the right side rail and then come back into the back of the pack. Can't tell if he can get to that six ball from there. Yeah, that's what he's looking at. So he's got to slip past that 12. All right, just playing all the way down there. Leaving him jacked up over a ball. Very effective shot. Beautiful. Yeah, that's, he keeps putting Lee in really tricky situations. Yeah, that's, that's just a hard coon position for anybody straight over a ball from seven and a half feet away. That's tough. I wouldn't be surprised to see Lee do something with a one ball here, just so he doesn't have to take a risk queuing over those balls. Or off the four here. Nice job. Uh, he definitely leaves some options here. I mean, Rob's got a cut on that 15. And it's a pretty free one. Pretty sure he's safe from the scratch. Yep. I have a hard time not shooting that ball. Yeah, I, I can't really see the reason you wouldn't. Got a ball that's open on his side, it's also open on yours, and you make that cut, you're off to the races. That is a great example of why one pocket is just a different game than any game in the world. Both these guys playing nine ball, they're going to shoot that shot all day, but for some reason he thought the risk wasn't worth it. I, I can't really see why, but that's probably why they're far better one pocket players than I am. Pocketing that four, getting all the way under the one. Incredible shot. Beautiful shot there for Lee. Putting Rob back in that same trap he put Lee in a minute ago. I think Lee's got a bank here on this one. You could leave him doubled up. That might just be too risky. He's kicking under, knocking that 14 out. Yep. Gets there. Well, that simplifies things for Lee. Not sure how long it's going to last, but it does for now. I think I like bank in this one, not intending to make it, but intending to hit it wide, get it in front of my hole, float that cue ball down to the head rail. He's got a back cut on this 15 though, again, he passed on it once. He's a lot closer to it now though. Both 
both these players need nine balls. Beautiful shot. Oh, not quite beautiful enough though. And gets real fortunate hanging on that seven ball. Yeah, I tell you, sometimes that's the best thing in the world that can happen is hanging that ball in the jaws. I'm sure he wishes he would have made it, but after landing on that seven, I don't think so. Yeah, boy, that's tough action here for Lee. I play off the two, try to get underneath the 14 ball there. I don't know if that risk is worth it either. Could just try and draw back behind that seven off the two also. Hmm. He's right to take his time here. Yeah, I mean, normally I like the two off the two to go behind the 14, but. It's a pretty small window there. <clears throat> you also yeah, take the risk of opening it up. Yeah, just kicking and trying to make that 15. Ooh. Gotta make sure you make that ball though. Oh, that's gonna hurt. All right, so he's falling a negative two and Rob's off to the races. Man, great opportunity here for Rob Zayas. You kind of got to work your way up here. You kind of got to take the three next, even though you don't want to. Not sure. Yeah, he's looking at how close he is to the rail there. He might have to cut this ball so thin that he's going to have to come around two rails. No. Looks like he's got enough there. Yep, leaving himself the back cut on the three. You're probably going to play three to the 13. Yeah, because both those balls are blocked by the six. Probably got to go three, thirteen, six, and then work your way backwards. I don't. Th <clears throat> I don't think you want to risk going into the pack here, pushing it the wrong direction, and not going to get much out of that. Just trying to slip under that eleven ball. Holds up just in time. Now you got a good opportunity to move some balls. Yeah, and it looks like it should work out for him. Gonna be coming to that lower part of the table here. Nice shot. Does knock something in front of Lee's hole, but you're up four balls at this point. Yeah, this one's no walk in the park either. I like coming around the back side of the six. I like coming foot rail, left side rail, back out for the six ball. There's a pretty straight line to come between the five, six. You just got to make sure you don't catch the bottom side of either one of those. This really depends on how sure your line you're going to be. 
feel like if I can get to the left side of that six ball and leave myself a back cut, I got a good chance of jostling the four, five, eight, opening those up. Coming around the back side. Gives himself a perfect line. Great shot. Man, he and he might just skip hitting those balls too. He might just draw through that gap between the 15 8, come up for the 15 or 9 next. He needs 5. Yeah, last thing you want to do is get stuck with a ball hanging in Lee's, Lee's pocket. Yeah, I think he's drawn that gap. Get up there. Ooh. Well, he got there. I imagine that's a steeper cut than he wishes it was. Definitely got himself an angle. Yeah, I mean, the way it's lined up, it looks perfect to get back on the two. I'm not sure that two passes the nine, though. Oof. Yeah, that's it's a hard shot to be staring at. You're up four, negative two. The last thing you want to do is sell an opportunity for Lee to get back in this game. Yep, sometimes you just got to shoot, though. I think he's going to come around two rails. It does look like he's got room for that two ball. Wow. Overhit it. Man, hit it nice, but just got too much out of it. Now you're blocked to get into the 10. You're forced to take that back cut. I mean, what else can you do? Got to take that nine. You're not going to force it to try and get another one. Oh. Man, he hit that ball really nice. Just overhit it. Put too far. If you could see that 10, I think you'd just pocket that 10 and lay up. But I think we're going to see a back cut on that nine ball. Yeah, boy, even if you fire that nine, I mean, you can hope to come right side rail, foot rail, left side rail. You're just still not getting anywhere. I think you make that nine ball and you just try and knock his ten out of there. Looks like he's got plenty of room to work with a ten if you can make the nine. But at this point, you're not going to take a bigger risk to do something with the ten than take a risk on the back cut to try and make that nine ball. Alright. He's just gonna make that ten. Oh, I move it. Wow, look at that shot. Don't you dare. Don't you dare scratch. Wow. I can't believe what a good shot he just hit that. That is heartbreaking.
And he clipped that ball out just perfect. That is not an easy shot. Knocked it towards his hole. Whew. Wow. <laughs> My God. Well, he's not going to want to watch that one twice. I tell you what. Rotten roll for him, but he's still up. Uh, yeah. Is that four to negative two? Six, nine, eleven. Yep. Four to negative two. Man, oh man. And this is a lot of room for Lee to work. Still got to deal with that cluster, but I know the five ball goes from there. Six ball passes the eight. So two, seven. I think he might have himself left himself a little steeper than he'd like on this seven ball, but he'll be fine getting on the nine. probably draw all the way into that side rail and back out. Beautiful. Nine to the six, I would imagine here. I think he's probably going to want to use the five to come into those balls. He's got a, a good line to leave himself on the 6 so he can move that 4 or 5 and open up the 15 8. At this point, where he's at right now, I don't think he's going to risk just rolling into it. I think he's kind of got to push through it and make sure he opens something up. Yeah, I mean, you, you roll that ball, you get stuck behind the four. All of a sudden, you don't have a shot on the 15-8. I think if you push through, you know you're at least going to have something on the 10 ball. Probably something on the four. He needs seven. All right, so he's just skipping it. He's going to use the 10 ball here. Not sure how happy he's going to be with that. He's also got the back cut on the five. He's looking at the line right between those. That's a pretty natural line for him. Yeah, he's got to hit this with a little bit of pace. Pretty easy to get ticky ticky stuck between those, that four, five, fifteen. Beautiful. Well, gets through there a little too clean. Uh, leaves himself a combo. It's a pretty free one, though. I think that's what he'll take. Try and make this combo. Eight ball is unfortunately going the wrong direction. Got to make sure you make this one. Perfect. He needs four. Well, you don't get to see a lot of ten and outs in this game, but you might see one here. He's got three. Fairly obvious. I'm pretty sure that four has got a window between the five eight. It's tight, but if I've learned one thing about commentating. If it looks tight, he's probably got it. 
Yep. So four to the five. Five to the eight, leave himself a good line to get back on that one ball. Oh. It's just killing me for you, Rob. I can't stop thinking about that scratch. Yep, so you're going to see him play that right side rail, left side rail, back behind the one. Yeah, boy, that is, that's a tough one to sit there and watch somebody run 10 balls on you after playing such a solid game. Beautiful execution. All right. Lee is one ball away here. Slips that ball in there. Man, oh man. Making sure the ball counts right. Yep. <laughs> Lee's just making sure. Oh, I mean, you can just see it in Rob. That's just devastating, but... Lee, a really good sport. Really fun player to watch play. Just one of those Filipinos with an incredible attitude. We're here at the Derby City Classic, and this tournament is brought to you by Diamond Billiard Products. That's all the tables you see out here, all the lights you see, just incredible products, the best in the business for my dollar. Simona's Cloth, Aramith Billiard Balls, Eltsville AccuRack, AccuStats Video Productions, and Master Billiard Chalk. If you guys haven't been to the Derby City Classic and you're a pool fan, make it happen. This is the my favorite tournament in the world. Well, Lee with a huge comeback there after being down four to negative two. Runs ten and out, and he's up two one and breaking. Oh, that's just a gut punch for Rob. Let's see if Rob can turn it around. Well, he needed that one. Early scratch there for Lee. Catches that wing ball coming in, and he's going to start negative one. Yep, taking a good look at that stack. That's really, really hard to not want to do something offensive here. It's also really easy to force something to get yourself in trouble. Um, taking a look at that 11-4. Nothing doing with the 1-8. Yeah, boy, I, I don't see how you can shoot that. Not a clear way to get to the 11, really, without pushing a bunch over there. Looks like he might be playing the 6 ball. I like that. I like playing the 6 down to that foot rail, back up table, and leaving the cue ball right in that crook there. I think that's the most obvious shot is to play the nine ball. Um, play the nine two rails. A lot of good things can happen from there. I think some people would play the nine two rails into the 15 here. Try and push something over there.
He's just straight banking it. I really like that. I didn't see that at all. So just playing the straight bank and kind of using that cue ball to come back up table into the pack. Effective shot. Moves stuff towards his pocket. Eliminates the threat for Lee. Unfortunately, everything's kind of turned away from his pocket right now. Uh, but yeah, nothing clear to shoot at for Lee here. He's probably going to play off that 15 and over behind the 14. He's got a path to the 11, huh? If he's got that window... Oh, I can't... Im yeah. I don't think that exists at all. I was excited to see it happen, but I don't think so. That 15-3 is pretty lined up. I mean, it does look like he's got enough of the 9 ball that he could bank that 9. And the 15-3 looks pretty close to wired. You just got to make sure you can do something with your cue ball to not sell anything. And that 14 ball is pretty juicy there for Rob. These shots are, are big deals. It's really easy to kind of get in the habit of just surviving a shot like this as opposed to trying to push to make something happen. Right off the 12 to get behind the 14. Nice shot. I wouldn't be surprised to see Rob want to move these balls here, the 15-3. It looks like it's lined up a little bit high of the pocket, but it's close enough that I don't really want Lee shooting it against me. Could see him kicking underneath those balls. Could also see him playing that nine ball into the 315 or trying to play it underneath to try and catch the bottom side of that ball. That's what he's looking at right now. The 14 looks like it's in the path from there. No, he's got it. Or he's playing off the 14 and down there. Pretty shot. I think he would have liked to have nudged it just a little bit. But still pretty good control there. Yeah. Lee's looking at kicking this ball. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it doesn't sell a lot to kick this ball. You got a chance at making the ball, and as long as you hit that ball full. Oh, no, he's trying to go up behind there. All right. That's a nasty little shot, too. Anytime you surround your opponent with balls, there's pretty tough to work with. Trying to see if he can get to that 14. He'd like to play off the 14 and then under that 3. Yeah, that's a really nice shot there for Lee. Yeah, if he can see that 14, I think that's what he's going to do. If he can't, I think you're probably going to see him kick under the 3 ball.
Yeah, nothing really doing with a nine ball there. I mean, he can play off it, but it's just going to get right in the way of the path that he kind of hoped to go on. Yeah. Anytime you make your opponent take a minute between shots, you know you did something right. And yeah, I mean, even if he can see that 14, it's still a risky shot. He's really got to get in that gap, and even if you get in that gap, you overhit it and you sell a bank, so... I'd really like to be right under that three ball, right where he's pointing. All right, so he's just kicking. Makes good contact. Yeah, that's awful nice shot. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't leak out there. Moves away a threat. Lee does have a bank on the seven ball, and it's pretty free. Huh. I'm going to be surprised to see him do that and push stuff towards Rob's pocket. I think the seven ball is a pretty, for me, it's a pretty obvious shot. He really likes it, though. Maybe playing the 15 off the nine here. Yeah. Well, once you get married to a bank and you love it, a lot of people like these these back back cut banks. I know he knows better than I do, but I'm still surprised to see him pass on that seven. Yeah, turning that, turning that 15. Hoping to go right into the 10 ball here. Ooh, that's just way more of a risk than I'd like to be taken. Okay, he's just playing off the bottom of it. that carom yep he liked where he put him last time I was trying to get him right back there Rob's got a little more room to work this time though none of the long bank lanes open I don't think he's going to try and spin all the way under that three. <clears throat> I like just glancing off the nine and coming right back up underneath those balls. Could kind of put Lee in a similar trap here if you wanted to. Unfortunately, it's on the wrong side of things for him, but he could play that 4-11 and kind of open things up and put him in the crook between the 1-8 or the 9-8. I think the obvious one's to play off the 9 here. Yeah. Boy, if that 7 ball didn't look juicy before, it sure does now.
Shot that one pretty quick. Gets it down towards his hole. Protects it. Um, yeah, maybe just didn't want to risk making contact with that 13 on the right-hand side. Or I mean, that's pretty effective. Rubs on the rail. He's got a ball in front of his hole. No real way to get to it. Grub's either going to play off this 13 and slide down or play right into that 3. So it looks like kicking into the 3 ball. Trying to catch the right half of it and slide down. Nope. Kicking into the 7 ball, like I said. It's a nice shot. Keeps the 7 low enough that he doesn't open up a bank. Makes it tough for Lee to get back in that spot he'd like to put him in. Yeah, that's a very nice shot there. Yeah, it kind of forces him to move one of the two balls that he would really prefer to m not move. Looking like it's going to be the seven. And you can play this uh, seven ball bank back at the 915 and carry your cue ball forward and kind of follow a similar path. Wow, look at that shot. 12-11, cue ball carries forward. Well, rearranging the furniture, that definitely changes things. I don't see anything too clearly offensive here for Rob. If he's got the line, I think he'd love to play off the, the 15 right side rail and then under the seven. You can always kick that three ball too. And what fun one pocket to watch. Both these guys real long thinkers, definitely taking their time. Nobody wanted to give up an advantage. Rob really wanted to fight back to get this 2-2. Two -two. Looks like playing off the top side of the one, trying to get under the seven. Oh man, that's a that's a big mistake right there. Might have got away with it. I don't know if you can see that eight to cut it. Not sure if you can see that combo. Oof. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, if he's got the eight ball, Rob might be in trouble here. Oh, I I don't think he's got it. Also doesn't look like he has the combo. Rob, might, he really might have got away with one there. Yeah, I mean, Lee could try to bend this ball to make that eight, but boy, that's... Everything about this it feels pretty risky. I kind of like kicking this one here. I mean, he's obviously a way more offensive shooter than I am, but... Maybe he's got that fit, that combo. Yeah, he's got it. Oh, that's a rough rub. I think he's going to be in a good spot, but at this point he's looking at the seven ball, and that's a heck of a reach to cut that seven. Kind of 
Kind of got to take a look at that 414. If you can play that and it misses the one ball, it's got a chance of going. Could probably hang on the 15. No, doesn't look like... Wow. <laughs> the behind the back seven foot stretch. Off the left side of the nine behind the one. Doesn't quite get there. And that's why people love one pocket. We're back to even. Zero, zero. Half hour through this game. <laughs> I love that part of this game. Uh, this is exactly why I love one pocket. Watching these strategic masters at work. Boy, is he in a tough spot. He's going to play off the one, off the foot rail between the seven, nine. He might have enough to get underneath the seven. Move it that way, but. Yeah. Nice shot, but boy, he wishes he was behind that three. That nine ball is lined up to be a kiss. I don't think he can really afford to shoot that bank. I wouldn't be surprised to see Lee shoot that same thing off the seven ball and try and get behind the one. Yeah, you can kind of look at how that cue ball is lined up with the nine straight at the high side of that upper left hand corner pocket. And that means it's a pretty dead kiss. Not that he can't work something around that, but the natural line is a kiss. Yeah, that one ball is pretty wide open, too. Can't really just play up table here. All right. It's going to play it. Oh, okay. Moves the one. Does a good job protecting those balls. It's a nice little shot. Might be too aggressive, but I think Rob's got a shot at that two railer on the 11. That bank at the nine feels really risky to me. <clears throat> he likes it. Beautifully struck. Oh. Plays an excellent two-way shot there, hanging the nine in the jaws. Man, very nice shot for Rob Saez. It's got a pretty straight bank on this five ball here, and an easy way to kind of get on the one afterwards if he wants to take it. I I like that shot. That nine ball is deep though. We saw him try to kick and make a ball earlier and missed it wide. Could also play that 15 ball to make the nine. Just looking at bending it. You know, man. You just, you don't see a lot of that in one pocket, which is kind of surprising, but I mean, that's a, that's a touchy little shot. Lee just hits it with so much confidence. Rob taking a one nothing lead.
Well, that 10 ball kind of screws up my two railer on the 11 idea. I think you're probably just going to move the seven here. We can move the seven enough and come back and nudge anything with that four fourteen. That would be advantageous. Also, you got to loosen up something on your side. Well, got it over there. Not clear if it can go or not. He might be taking this bank on the 15. Looks like he can slip, maybe slip right by that four ball. Yeah, boy, but if he nudges that four, that could be real trouble. And that seven ball does look like it goes. Like that's what he settled on. Oh, look out, corner pocket. Wow, two at a time. Well, it's not quite as bad of a scratch as Rob got, but he got one back anyway. So that ball spots, and Lee's going to owe one. Wait, for somebody up 2 1, he sure spent a lot of time in the negative. Looks like these players might be taking a quick break. All right, they're back from a quick break. And it looks like, let's see, Lee's down negative one. Rob's gonna fight his way back into this match. Ball in hand in the kitchen. That's a great time to take a break, I tell you what. Walk away, clear your mind, whole new match. Because, yeah, they're all there for him. He needs seven. He really wants to make sure he gets him on this, too. The way that 7 14 4 goes is going to be pretty crucial. This is about the hardest straight in shot you'll ever make in your life, right here. It's the same shot you've shot a million times, but. When the whole game's riding on it, that's tough. Excellent shot there. He's probably going to try and draw off this 7 a little bit to clip the 4 to make sure he leaves the 14. I feel like pushing into it, it's pretty easy to end up a little too far to the right. Beautiful shot. Ugh. Unfortunately, over that 12, looks like he's got a little bit of cue and room on the left side of the ball. He's probably going to want to hit this. Well, I like coming down for the four ball next, but I think a lot of players are going to try and use this and come back behind the 112. I think I like playing the 14 to the four and then working my way back to that side of the table. You've got cue and room on the left side of the cue ball. Yeah, I like spinning this with high inside.
He needs five of them. Oh, devastating. Oh my gosh, and you can just see it in him. Oh, heartbreaker. All right, well, he needs nine. We've seen him pluck ten out of there. A three to negative one lead for Rob Saez. Yeah, you just don't get many opportunities like that against a player like Lee Van Cortiza. This is no walk in the park for him, though. Team ball out to the 12, it looks like. He's going to have to start looking at some combos or nudging some balls here soon. This is tough. I mean, it looks like he's going to have to take the 6-3 next, but it's kind of going to be hard to hold for even that. Taking a look at all his options there. Could consider cutting the four ball here, but I would be surprised to see him shoot that. Yeah, lining up with some inside to kill that. Leaving himself the combo. If you make this one, you're in pretty good shape. It's a, it's a pretty do or die combo though. You know Rob's fired up. He's sitting over there chomping at the bit for another chance to get to this table. Could have worked out better. Man. That's tough action. I don't think he's going to shoot that eight ball. I don't think he can afford to cut that one. He's pretty on that six, too. Boy, that's this is a tough situation. Man, heartbreaker. It even happens to players like Lee. For me, I think I like I like playing off the five here, coming up and down. But again, it's, it's hard to not sell a bank on that four ball if that's what you do. It's a tough call. Looks like you might just leave him long and doubled up. that five all the way back does, does leave him doubled up pretty effective shot there spotting his ball up three to negative two well no nine and outs this time well, I mean Rob is on that head rail center of the table but it's hard to not consider shooting that three ball Cuts there. It's a spot shot. It's a shot you're familiar with, but if you shot many of them, you know that's a tough spot to shoot it from. I'd have a hard time not shooting that ball, though. That's tough. Pushed up against the wall. I've shot that shot from that exact position, and not a fun spot to do it from. All 
All right, undercuts it a little bit, gets away with it, protects the three ball. I mean, he's got a bank on the four, but I don't think that's a bank you shoot. Play the four into the three ball, but you can get in trouble doing that. Yeah, I'm not sure what you do from here. Taking a quick run away from the table there. Might just be playing the four through that gap of the third or fourteen three, rolling the cue ball underneath the three. Going into the three, catches the thin side of the three, moving it to his side. Pretty awesome shot. Okay. We're getting a warning here from the referee. They're past the two hour mark. Referee explaining the new rules put into place here this year at Derby City Classic. These are the express one pocket rules. More than four balls above the head string after the two hour mark, the fifth ball would spot. Um, and I believe it would be the closest ball to the head string. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, interesting. I haven't gotten to see a match where this came into play yet, so this will be really interesting and really unfortunate too I don't think the the play has been exceptionally slow in this situation um, yeah it'll be interesting to see how that impacts this match so if we see an up table game we're going to see a pretty interesting up table game yeah, I mean, you see Rob looking at lining up a, a back bank that you wouldn't have seen him take this entire time, and already you can see that it's impacting his decision-making. Not that that's what he's going to end up doing, but... Okay. So I guess the rule is uh, closest to the head string, so if, if he's got four balls in there, a fifth ball goes in, which... Whichever ball is closest to the head rail is going to be the ball that spots. So, yeah, that's interesting. I'm going to have to read back through these rules also. I, like we saw earlier, I mean, there's, there's specific rules written around this tournament to kind of keep this match moving, keep the pace of play going, uh, but they're not always followed. So interesting that this match would be called for the two-hour mark. Looks like he's banking this ball. Hmm. I kind of like nudging that three right at the 813 and getting down to the foot rail. I know you want to make something happen here, but this can't be a super high percentage bank. Yeah, you're looking at missing that eight ball and not scratching. That's a little line. I like that he pointed at that. I mean, you see just how little of that rail he really has to get to.
Yeah, that's pretty do or die here. You're gonna risk uh, the whole match on this shot. Yeah, for my money, if I'm if I'm playing a bank here, I think I'd prefer to play the bank on the one. You can float up table. You got a chance of getting behind that four ball. We saw Rob execute one of those shots perfectly earlier. Um, I think I kind of like that bank better than I like this back bank. He looks like he likes it, though. All right, so... Trying to play that carom. I like the idea. Unfortunately, this is a pretty viable shot here for Lee. That 13 is tight going underneath that 8. And the 8 ball, shooting the 8 first kind of gets you in trouble. Real easy to get stuck there. He is shooting the eight first. Dogs a ball. Wow. Really surprised to see that. Again, it seems like both players, it, it's interesting once you have a referee interaction, all of a sudden you start thinking about things really differently and maybe you're forcing a shot, maybe you're just a little distracted, but can definitely impact the play. But Rob with a back cut here to... I mean, he's got a chance to win this match. Well, win this game. Force a game game five, sorry. <laughs> I think he's still got part of a pocket for that one ball. I sure hope he does. And that would be a pretty rotten roll. Yeah, I think he's got partial pocket there. It's no walk in the park. Rob's been firing these balls in. Had a whole pocket. Let that ball go a little more than he would have liked, but he made the ball. I don't think he's going to like that cut on the 14. It's got a pretty pretty clear pass bank on this eight ball. Um, yeah, that fourteen is pretty sharp cut. Three to go. Both players yielding there. I'm definitely a player who likes to let my my neighbor go first if there's any sort of question. I'd rather walk away, take a drink, and come on back. Let's see. Yeah, I'd like to see that, that 14 ball angle. Not sure how viable of a cut that is. Yeah, but it's... That is a real sharp cut. It'd be interesting to see if he stiffs this or if he plays the passer. It's like he's looking at passing it. You kind of got to twist this ball if you do. Catch the high side of that pocket? No. Nope. Misses. Neither one of those balls goes though for Lee, it looks like. 6 2 both blocked. He's got a cut on the 13. Mm. 5 2, anybody's ball game. Big cut here for Lee.
He just missed a ball. It's his first real miss in a while. Not going to find two in a row. And he's off. You're probably going to play the, the two from here. I mean, you're on that ball. Why not take it now? I think he had intended to take the 10 next, but... Yeah, I think I'm going to start with the 2. needs five of them. Out for the six. Six to the five. Hard to say whether he'll force a bank on that or not. He'd sure like to cut it with that eight ball sitting there, I tell you what. pretty straight here. Just trying to really figure out where he wants to be on that 10 ball to get behind the 14. Looks like he can kind of stun over there and get pretty straight on the 10 to just be able to draw over for a cut on the 14. Yep. Oh. Well, Rob has had to sit through a couple painful ones here. He's played a heck of a match, and it's it's pretty hard to sit there and watch your opponent run out. All right, stiffing over to get behind the 14, or running it down to the foot rail. Yeah, drawing straight over. Uh oh. That didn't sound good. And it didn't get there. Well, one away. And he's in a spot. It's, you're not banking that four ball. You're not doing nothing like that. You got to get underneath that eight ball. I think he's going to kick to that right side rail and underneath the eight. He can look at it playing the 14 off the eight and moving them both out of there, but... Boy, that's, that's a tougher shot than I'd want to be taking right now. Oh, so close. Yep, here comes the kick. Wow. <laughs> I did that with an awful lot of confidence for a guy hanging in the jaws of the pocket. That was excellent shot. Very impressive. <clears throat> Rob would sure love to not move either one of those balls, but I think he's kind of going to have to move that 14. He can try the bank, banking it back at the eight ball, moving the cue ball up table, but... Not sure if he's really going to want to move the ball that much. Looks like that might be what he's playing. Get out the way. Gets out the way, dodges the four ball. Boy, that would have been catastrophic clipping that four ball. 
pretty excellent shot there. Rob not shying away from anything here. That's a... Takes nerves of steel to take that shot, and he just fired at it. I think Lee's probably just gonna... Now I think he's probably gonna fire that eight ball out of there. I don't really see him trying to make make one of these balls. Yeah, I like shooting dead into the into the eight here. He's got a two railer on the floor if he wants it, but he's gonna have to get pretty crafty with that cue ball. Looks like he might be thinning off the four, coming two or three rails underneath the eight. I like that idea. I think I'd still... He got a dead shot straight into that eight ball. I, I think I like moving that out of the way. He's going the other way. Hits it beautifully. <coughs> yeah, I mean, Rob's got a chance at Z-banking this eight back at his hole. From that, little distance above the pocket it's a pretty tough pretty tough ball to allow that second bank to float down you really got to bank that thing really close to his hole if you want to do it and that's a big risk can kind of thin off that eight ball and try and get it closer to your hole and double him up between the 14 8 leave him down table Yeah, I, I like that shot, and excellent execution. Gets him all the way down to that head rail. Very nice shot. Lee's kinda gotta consider moving both those balls out of there. But that's a tough place to do it from. The other option here is to play off the four and float down behind the eight ball. And that is a very little window also. Again, very kickable ball from there also for Rob, so... Gotta be real cautious with what you do here. You might be up 7-5, but he's on his heels. Yeah, I mean, you try to move both those balls and you can sell the farm pretty easily. He can also display the one rail kick. I kicked that left side rail and into the eight. It's probably the safest, safest play here. Wow. Oh, and makes that ball. Holy cow. That's huge. Rob Saez with a chance to win this. Oh man, oh man. I don't like trying to draw around that ball either. I kind of got to go forward here. See the two railer wrapping around for the 10. Nice shot. It's got a great angle to get back on the four. Oh man. Big spot shot here for Rob Saez. exactly where you want to be. Get around it. Get around it. Oh my goodness. Well, not quite enough mustard this time. 
Seven seven. Rob needs this one. That's a big two railer you're gonna shoot here. Very makeable shot. He'd sure like to be on the other side of that seven ball, not her four ball though. Little tight. It's it all the way down there though. This is why we play one ball one pocket folks, right here. So many aspects of this game and when it comes down to this it's just, I mean, a totally, totally different game. Little discussion about the score here. Pull count is 7-7. Seven, seven. Not sure what happened. Maybe somebody forgot to grab a ball. Rob definitely only had two on that run. Yeah, talking about that ball that got spotted, uh, that Lee made non-intentionally. Alright, looks like they've come to an agreement. 7-7, seven, seven, still the score. Lee's got a three-railer here. I, it's tough, I mean, you get down to one ball, one pocket, and some of these shots, even if you don't like them, you gotta take them is what you're gonna take a just as risky of a shot to not have a chance of winning the game but this I mean you're lining up pretty close to straight at that side pocket for this three railer you catch one of those points and you can really get in trouble playing it the other way playing the z-bank well, that's that. Wow. We're going to Hill Hill, folks. Man, Rob Saez with a chance to go 2-2. Two, two. I think I might have tried the other way, but I, I do think that side pocket was in the way. All right. So turning it around, Rob Saez making it 2-2 two, two. after a 9 and out. Being down 2 1, your opponent breaking, now it's 2 2. You're breaking, you got a little momentum on your side. We got ourselves a match here at the 2024 Derby City Classic. This is just round one. You're tuned into Railbirds Productions here. My name's Summerfield Habner. If you get a chance, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you do, we're going to let you know every time we go live ish with a new match brought to you from Derby City Classic. Um, there's a ton of good Derby City action coming out. Like I said, this is only round one. If you like one pocket, this is the place to be. Rob Saez ties it up 2-2 two -two with a break. Um, again, the Fargos look like Rob is a 741. 730 is just about when you get into that professional region. That's when you can no longer play in amateur events. Lee coming in at an 814. I mean, that's, I mean, top-level pro. But as you can see, Rob is a top-level one-pocket player. Playing with the best of them. Lee, more of a rotation player than a one-pocket player, but obviously has brilliant one-pocket moves and has learned a lot about the game. Nasty little break there. He's got, he's got a pretty clear gap to get through there with that 2-5, though. I'd be surprised to see him do anything with the 6-ball. Um, I think he's probably going to kick something here. I think he would kick at the 15. He'd sure like to do something. But, boy, with that 10-15 right there, it's, it's tough to do too much offensively here. He's looking at it. 
All right, playing the six and probably trying to freeze right behind that 14 if he does. There we go. That looks a little more like what I thought he'd do. Just following it. Gets the two to his side. Doesn't sell anything. I know it's kind of basic one pocket here, but I... I'm probably going to play off the thin side of the four and try and get behind that 12-9. Again, that uh, express rule is still in place here, so four balls end up up in the kitchen there. The fifth ball, the closest to the head rail, would spot. That's at the two-hour mark. There's another thing that happens at the three-hour mark. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. If we get there. Looks like he's just kicking and sticking. Wow. That's a nasty, nasty shot there from Rob Saez. Moves another ball to his pocket. Hangs him on a ball. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Yeah, Lee's got a kick from here. Probably see him kick two rails at that 15. I'd like to just catch the, just below the 50 yard line of that 15 on the bottom side. Doesn't quite get it. Slept off on him. Lee's in the negative. He has spent an awful lot of time in the negative for a guy that was one ball away from winning this match. But he also ran 10 and out, and I believe a 9 and out. Well, he kick and, kicked and stuck real well last time. Let's see if he's got it in him again. Yeah, so this time he's going to spin that ball. So thin off this ball, catch that side rail, and back behind the pack. Leak through a little more than he would have wanted to. And that gives Lee quite a bit more freedom to do something he'd like. Uh, doesn't look like anything doing with the 6. The 14 he can't really get to. Hmm. I think I kind of like using the 6 to get on the back side of that 14. He also may just thin off this ball and spin it down to the foot rail. Man. Well, he's two inches away from perfect. That's a pretty good shot. Yeah, does good job keeping him close to that rail, close to that ball, making it really tough for him to cue. Might have to kick in this position again. Really hoping to protect that 15-7. The more those balls loosen up, though, the, the harder that kick is to get it to just stick right there. You really got to hit it perfect. He is going to try to thin off that ball.
boy, I have a hard time not wanting to kick that ball right into that 12. And looks like it's got a chance. Four ball in the way of the pocket. All right, just taking his foul. Takes a foul. Technically, both those players should go back to even, but they're still playing backwards. Um, well, and that's the way one pocket is traditionally played, so makes sense, but that's one of the rules that they've also tried to utilize to kind of keep the game moving in a forward progression. And he's taking a look at that 13-5 it looks like. Ooh, which looks pretty pretty wired to me. I don't know if this is when you shoot it, but good thing to be aware of. Yeah, it doesn't look like he can glance off that 8 and really get the momentum he'd need. Push that 5 all the way towards the hole. And they just realized the rule, so they both go back to zero. That's good. Yeah, I think I like playing the six into the into the ten and trying to draw in between that fourteen eight. really like to try to find a way to shoot that 13-5 because you know your opponent's going to move it on you if you don't take it now. Shot clock is something that is discussed. It is in the rules, but it's something that's just impossible to really enforce in a tournament like the Derby City Classic. Uh, really spread out lack of referees but that's something that I've seen come into into play with slower shooters not that either one of these players are, are slower shooters but it's definitely a point of point of conversation in this game He really is in a tricky spot, you know, it's a single shot can be hugely pivotal. Right? Two real kicking under that. Trying to make contact with that fifteen. Does he get it this time? Oh man. And we're back. Well, if there's one thing you've learned. It's that Lee doesn't like that spot. And if I were Rob, I'd sure want to put him right back there. To the point of even being willing to take another foul for it. You know you're just going to go back to even. Make him shoot it again. Just trying to go in. Yep, that's the move. I think he was probably trying to move that five fifth, or 13 5 a little bit also, but... I mean, he, he knows he can't get to it from that spot, so. I think Lee's considering leaving him long at this point. So you still got to keep track of the three foul rule also. That's going to put Lee on two. And I actually, that's, Rob is on two at this point also. Um, 
don't know that that's something that's been discussed. It is Lee's responsibility to warn Rob before he shoots this time if he is on two, but that, as far as I remember, is two fouls in a row for Rob Syeth. Yeah. Well, guess we're going to pretend the three fell rule doesn't exist. Um, it's technically that's that's the end of the game right here. Um, if he doesn't warn him though, and again, it's now Rob's responsibility to warn Lee that he's on two also. So um, I won't get too caught up in it because it doesn't matter what I got to say. That's they're they're going to play by their rules because there isn't an official in this position but I think that's one of the tricky things about going without the negatives is you kind of lose track of that <coughs> of the number of fouls interesting well I don't think Lee's taking a foul here anyway so yep puts him in a tough spot there and we're back Well, now I really can't wait to see who wins this thing, because, yeah, that that could be a huge determining factor to not recognize that was a three foul. I think Rob's going to play off the top of that 12 and kind of try to get right back to about where he's at now. He doesn't want to float all the way down there. The last thing he wants to do is let him move that 15 ball. Doesn't look like he's got a clear path at the three, or he'd probably take that. He'd like to go down table here, but hey, he just jacked up over all those balls. Shooting that two doesn't look like any fun either. That's what he's looking at, though. Yeah, I've kind of been at a standstill on this point, and getting a little more distance between you might be might be the move here. Good shot. Doesn't open up the 15 entirely. Probably wishes he was a little closer to that bottom side rail, though. Yeah. I don't think he can see the whole 15, but he can see part of it. Yeah, I, I still think that's a smart shot for Rob, though. You got to get him, get him away from there, and kind of hope he's gonna make some kind of error. We've seen him make a couple mistakes shooting long. We know Lee's getting a little anxious to shoot at his hole too. Maybe glancing off the right side of the 10 ball here. Wow. Touchy little kick there. That was not a big gap. Played it really well. Yeah, I kind of can't really do anything with these guys. Nothing doing on the 5-4 bank. <laughs> Going foot rail, right side rail, and back up behind the pack. That's that is such an incredible shot. I, I don't know the players really recognize. If you watch much one pocket, you know what a great shot that is, but... That is superb control to move those two balls into a really tough situation. Great cue ball placement. Ouch for Lee Van Corteza. If he didn't know this two railer, he's gonna by the end of the day. Only jacked up over 
three balls there. Another foul. Sells a bank. That's an opening. Back to negative one. It sells a bank, but what does the bank really get you? You know, I mean, it gets you on the board, but it takes one of your balls out of play, and you don't really get... I don't see how he's going to get anywhere with it. You still shoot it, but I'm just not sure what you do next from there. Oh. That's a tough miss. This is this is tough action here. Just nothing really doing offensively. The two railer on the nine is just too much of a kiss, and it's just a little too wide. I'd like to get underneath that seven ball, but gotta hit a ball pretty fat to do that. He's on the rail, so he can't shoot with any draw. Unless he jacks up, that's the last thing he wants to be doing. Seven ball off the rail like that, you don't really want to take the chance kicking to seven. All right, takes another foul. I actually think that was well worth it for Lee. He hasn't had anything on his side the whole time. He's not worried about running balls, although he was at seven in that last game and didn't get out, so that's saying something. Um, but yeah, all of a sudden he has an offensive threat. He puts some pressure on Rob. It's a good shot. <coughs> he is on two fouls, let me note. That bank's too risky for me. Corner pocket's huge from there. Lee's got a, I mean, just a perfect shot on that 13 if you end up missing. And it's a perfect backboard to get behind those balls also. If you clip that one ball going in, you get yourself in trouble and that one ball is huge that far off the rail from there. He might just be getting it back down table and not really trying to make it. Well, nice control. Puts him over in the corner. Moves something else closer to his hole. And from that position, I don't really think Lee can afford to cut that 13 ball. He's looking at the one. That's that's what I was looking at, was playing the nine and trying to stick behind the one. Thought he was lining up a little low, but that's a really nice shot. He slipped a little further than he would have liked to, but kind of got away with it. Yeah, nice shot. Uh, turn that right around. All of a sudden, Rob's the one kicking. I don't think he can afford to shoot the bank on that one ball. He does have a gap between that 9-8. And I think he's either going to shoot that off the 13 behind the 12, or I think he's just going to kick behind the 12.
Yeah, but boy, you draw that line between the 13 and the corner pocket, and that's a pretty little window. You gotta catch that ball real thin. It's like you might be looking at the six ball too. You could definitely play off the six and try and get to the back part of the five. And what a great game. This has been a heck of a match. Playing that gap. Gets there beautifully. Moves it a little further away from his pocket, but more than anything uses the 12 to block from his side of the table. Nice little shot. I think Lee can see the high side of that 15. I don't think he can see the bottom. You can see the full four ball, and I think that's probably what he's going to end up using. Kind of play the four towards the one, and the cue ball carry forward to that left side rail. He sure doesn't want to leave a bank on any of those, though. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't get on the back of a ball on that left side of the table, if he uses the four, it's going to leave a really good bank return for Rob. I kind of like the idea of trying to use the ten ball. Right, you and low. It's a terrific shot. Yeah, gets him right down there. Man, nothing to shoot at from there. Still protects his ball, too. That seven ball is definitely blocking the 12. Nice shot there for Lee. I think Rob's probably going to play off the bottom side of that 15 and try and get on the back side of the 12. Tough place to shoot that shot from. I mean, you're just jacked up directly over that 14. You gotta spin this ball a little bit. The last thing you want to do is jack up and end up massaying the ball. Yeah, that's that's tough. You almost got to play that for speed and nothing else. You know, pick a line and just go right at it instead of trying to spin it. So much can go wrong from there. Thinning off the 7 and trying to get past the 15. Oh my gosh. Oh. Wow. That one hurts. So I think he was trying to pop that 7 out enough to use that as another blocking ball, but just didn't get there. Oh. That one will eat you alive. Are we going to see two 10 and outs in one match? Leave and Cortez a wide open table. I think this is one where if Lee doesn't get out, he's pretty disappointed in himself. There's there's nothing standing between him and getting out here. Yeah, even with a 10 and out, that's, this is very doable. Probably taking the 9 ball next, I would imagine. 8 to go.
Yeah. I think he's smart to not slip down for the 15 there also. Stay up on top of that. Seven more. Eight to the... I don't like going to the 15 ball because I really don't want to run into that 714 and risk getting stuck down there. I would rather play 8 to the 13 and then play the 13 back for the 3. He might even be thinking about getting all the way back behind the 4 ball. Unless he's got enough to get himself straight enough that he can avoid the 714. Imagine he wishes he had a little better queuing position here, but he is, he's just fine. Looks like he can avoid that seven ball and pop back up for the 13 ball next. Might try to play for the three and just play the 13 if he, yep. All right, at this point, you're probably sliding up for the six ball next. You might as well. You gotta pluck a couple of those out of there. Five to go. Rob's, whatever he's feeling, he's not showing a whole lot. <laughs> Aside from being stuck in that chair, four to go. Man, that ball just rolled in on him. Yeah, unfortunately the six, you kind of, if you're not going to try and slide over for the ten ball here, you kind of got to take the thirteen next. Yeah, going all the way over for the ten. Well, that's all she wrote there. Oh, that's just devastating. You're probably going to see the 10, 13, 4 here. May just try and draw back. No, because that 4, 13's lined dead up. Yeah. Well, Lee Van showing why a pure shooter is a dangerous thing. Playing a defensive game like one pocket. Don't have to leave much of an opening, and they're going to make you pay for it. Two more. He'll probably play for the, it's either the 11 or the 4 ball. Looks like the 11 from where he's queuing. Set ball. Oh, no way. Oh, my God. <laughs> no way. Wow, two of them spot. And, yeah, I mean, what, what do you do from here? I've been in situations like this. I mean, the only thing you can do is try to run them out. <clears throat> What's your best shot? Are you going to gonna fire the bank on that one ball? Are you going to try and kick and kick and make the seven? I think that's about all you can do, but that's just devastating for Rob, man. I... Time for a hero shot. 
I tell you, he's made some pretty heroic shots in this match, too. Yeah, I think twisting that one back is the... <laughs> Somebody's over there giving him a hard time. Well, that's that. What a match, man. Holy cow. Lee Van Corteza taking that down against Rob Saez. Incredible match to watch here at the 2024 Derby City Classic. This is round one. Just think what we got in store for you here. Tons more Derby City action coming to you from Railbirds. My name's Summerfield Habner. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, we got much more coming at you, so stay tuned.